vorrei ringraziare il Presidente Gianni Pitella e gli altri membri del Parlamento per quello che avete detto. Le vostre parole parlano al nostro cuore. E ora vi comunicherò quello che penso. Thank you for scheduling this very timely debate, because it is really very timely. Let me assure you that the protection of children in the context of migration and the current refugee crisis is central in our overall migration policy, both for their short-term as well as long-term needs. The Commission, as you remember, announced uh, in its communication of February 10, 2016, a comprehensive approach to the protection of all children in migration, including unaccompanied minors. These actions are geared towards strengthening child protection systems in the Member States and are now being implemented. The Commission will also evaluate and report by the end of this year on the implementation of the 2010-2014 Action Plan on Unaccompanied Minors. All our efforts are concerted to address the complex and urgent issues that need to be resolved to ensure an adequate protection of migrant children arriving in Europe. Member States must ensure that they are capable of respecting the rights and meeting the needs of children in migration and addressing several gaps. These gaps include providing adequate reception conditions, including psychosocial care, prevention of children going missing and ensuring adequate responses in case they do, effective guardianship, access to information, access to legal counsel and assistance and other procedural safeguards and procedures such as Dublin transfers and family reunification. The use of arbitrary administrative detention and inappropriate detention conditions. And let me remind that detention is never the objective, but can only be a last resort. The Commission is acting to address all these gaps. The recent legislative proposals to reform the common European asylum system include stronger provisions on the protection and care and procedural safeguards for children. These new proposals aim at strengthening the protection of children, including those who are unaccompanied. They address key issues, key areas such as ensuring adequate reception conditions, ensure access to specialized services and education for migrant children, ensuring psychosocial support for, for victims of trauma, speeding up family reunification procedures. Nevertheless, more needs to be done to ensure that alternatives to detention are available and used, and to ensure the expansion of family-based care such as foster care for unaccompanied children. With regard to family reunification, our Dublin proposal provides for clear and precise rules and will enhance the efficiency of the system significantly without compromising any essential safeguards. The procedures will be shorter and current shifts of responsibility between Member States will no longer be possible. It also broadens the concept of family members to include the applicant's siblings. One of the main gaps has been on effective guardianship, where we have seen long delays in appointment and guardians being assigned unworkable caseloads of up to 1,000 children. Our asylum reform proposals address this issue. I count on your support and that of the Member States to agree 
on these reforms so we can ensure these safeguards in reality as soon as possible. In addition, the recent action plan on integration actions addresses education for children in migration. For children in uh, reception centres, our asylum reform proposals aim at further strengthening a child's right to access to education, also if they are in detention. Under the emergency support instrument, targeted funding is allocated to additional education activities for children. Outside the European Union, EU funding has been made available to programmes for vulnerable Syrian refugee and host community children and adolescents. According to the Council decisions on relocation, applications made by unaccompanied children and vulnerable persons shall be prioritised. Despite this, so far, very few unaccompanied children have been relocated from Greece and very few member states have made places available for them. To date, no children have been relocated from Italy. In our recent report, we have also raised this issue. As you know, the Commission is monitoring the situation in Greece and Italy very closely and is in continuous dialogue with member states, urging them to make pledges to relocate unaccompanied children. Finally, to foster a discussion between uh, those working in asylum and migration and those working in child protection, the Commission is dedicating the 10th European Forum on the Rights of the Child on the 29th of November 2016 to the protection of children in migration, where there will also be a dedicated side meeting on guardianship of unaccompanied children. Honourable Members of the Parliament, as I said in the beginning, protecting the most sensitive and the most vulnerable in this refugee crisis, and those are indeed children, is of paramount importance to the Commission. It is one of our priorities. But it takes many more stakeholders and actors involved to make this happen. The Commission counts on the European Parliament as its partner on this. I would like to close by saying this is not an issue that should in fact be debated. It is an issue that should simply be addressed urgently and jointly. Thank you for your attention.